Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship, so the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs, and how we learn from adversity. Every week, I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneur's Enigma podcast. I'm Seth. I've been Seth for the past hundred and, I don't know, bunch of episodes. I hasn't changed. I'm still Seth. Anyhow, I'm here with Nick Bavzar of Bavzar Consulting. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Seth. Yes. First try. Yay. And Nick is a marketing consultant. He helps businesses. And from what I remember from our last call... You help a lot of startups get a handle yeah. on things, which if anyone's that will startups or been in startups, they don't know their head from their ass. They really don't. So that's when you call someone like Nick in to help them figure stuff out. But let's go a little bit more into that. What is the nitty gritty of your consulting practice? Yeah. Thanks, Seth. It's good to meet you. My first question was, are you, were you Seth before podcasting or is that just in the last? Oh, it's brand, it's brand new. I, just said, I like that name. No. <laughs> Seth, I've been Seth for 41 years. So yeah, good stuff. Yeah. So in terms of consulting, I'll give you that in a second, but just kind of by background, I was an engineer by trade, uh, electrical engineer. So very much left brain thinking, worked mm-hmm. for Intel, designing high end servers. So very, very technical stuff. And then yeah. got out of the lab. Um, that was up in the Northwest in, in Seattle and Portland. I moved down to Austin, Texas and kind of fell in love with uh, the marketing side of things. And so uh, I've run different marketing teams for the past uh, 20 years. And then about three or four years ago, I started my own consulting practice, really just trying to help entrepreneurs and, and early stage marketing executives, sales executives get more demand generation pipeline. With my technical background, I used a bunch of systems and processes, spreadsheets, templates, that kind of thing. The to do various exercises within marketing. And so the focus has been kind of B2B SaaS, Series A, Series B, although some of the practices I've done with a couple of publicly traded companies, so definitely wow. can apply for larger organizations as well. But we find that usually when there's some new product development and some new message to get out, that's kind of the, the sweet. And you, and you, let me guess, you enjoy startups more because they're like the more nimble. Yeah, I like them both. They're different challenges. Mm-hmm. There's you get a little bit more resources at the at the larger companies, but it's just a, a blank slate with startups, right? You can come up with any message, any sort of anything that'll resonate. So it's always fun to be able to to have that blank slate and be able to try both, which is kind of nice. So yeah, mm-hmm. and so you're based in Austin, which is a crazy town from what I hear. It, it is a gem in Texas, but it's its own beast. <laughs> That's right. We're getting a lot of folks from both coasts, West Coast, East Coast. Uh, last and you're getting ice storms, yeah, too. Ice storm. That's right. Yeah, I'm looking out my window right now, and it's uh, it's apocalyptic. I mean, there's just half the Do we still have ice down there of, now? We don't have ice, but all the trees are down, so they haven't come around to pick up the trees. And it's, You guys don't know how to deal no. with this ice. Whereas no. it, was like, it was like 32 or like 20. When we were recording yeah. this, is in like the beginning of February. And... I remember seeing pictures of Texas getting slammed with ice, and we're a balmy 65 degrees. And I'm like, something's backwards. 
the pole it's up. sad because we get some 75 year old oak trees that are down and stuff like that oh. i mean some huge huge trees so definitely mother nature didn't know what to do with that ice storm oh my god so how did you find your way into like, engineering i'll today? probably date myself here a little bit but i remember gosh years ago when i was like 10 years old my dad brought home a pc and it was like a like an ibm ps2 yeah. And I thought it was the coolest thing in the world, right? You type on it and I'd found out how you play video games on it and mm -hmm. just geeked out on the computer. And then kept following that pursuit, learned some programming languages, did different things. And then ultimately I just wanted to keep going deeper and deeper and understanding like, how does a computer really work? And can't get much deeper than the electrical engineering level. And yeah, the idea was go work for Intel because they amongst every other company were the one that was like, they understand how a computer works really well. So. Exactly. That was kind Are of you a originally bit from the, the Pacific Northwest or no, how'd so you, that how'd was, you end up uh, out there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I grew up in Houston. So that was a Texas. Te oh, connection. so you're so um, Texan through and through. So yeah. Yeah. And so, so then I actually went to school though in Illinois. So Illinois has a phenomenal oh, yeah, they did. engineering program and at that time. This was back in the late nineties. They had the only fabrication facility, which is where you make chips and stuff like that. Intel they had poured some money in there. So Intel was recruiting from Illinois. Oh, so you, that's yeah. where I'm going to go after, after school. Yeah. Yeah. That was exactly it. So it's worked out pretty well. So, yeah, so you went from Houston to Urbana Sh Champlain. That's right. And then which cause the university of Illinois is known for it's the geek culture there. Like, yeah, is it that in Carnegie Mellon or is it and, and, and MIT, I was uh, that little place yep. called MIT, <laughs> but of the non MIT, like yeah, the non university of Illinois is yeah. like where it's at. Isn't the NIST there? Yeah, there's a, is amongst outside of the Ivy League schools, it's in the state schools. It's the, you know, at least at the time, it was the number one electrical engineering program in the country. So it was like, that was a big draw for me. And part of it, you're kicking out of high school. I'm like, I want to get away from, you know, my parents in Houston and Texas and all that. So, so got out there. From, and, from, from warm, like almost boiling <laughs> to like frigid cold. Yeah. Yeah. In the middle of nowhere. Right. So there's, I you know, know. There's Wait, what's, it, what's that's about the Urbana? Yeah, yeah there's there besides the college or it's pretty much the college. It's, it's pretty much the college. Although it's kind of a, a cool little town, but there's yeah. pretty much the college. So, so, so you left University of Illinois, went to Intel. Yeah. How, and you were at Intel for how long? About four years. So various engineering jobs there. And then I remember it's funny. I remember yeah. uh, so we were designing some high end servers. Um, these things Ooh. were like eight, ten thousand dollars just back in 2000. And we had a guy, a business guy that was buying our servers. And he had some problem with it. There was some, like, it wasn't computing correctly or something like that. And so he came up to our lab and we were trying to figure out what was going on. And I got to talk to the guy and he was taking this $10,000 server and turn around selling it for nearly a hundred thousand dollars. And I started talking to him. I was like, how are you doing? They're like, what are you doing with this? That you're making 90,000 on this thing. And he had designed some, some specific software to run on the server for a specific business application. And so it was just, for me, it was the insight of, wow, you can just that much value creation with a little bit of software running on our servers. And that was a little bit of the catalyst for me of why I'd want to get into marketing. I was like a little bit of, it was more than marketing. It was more just business. Yeah. And so that was the transition. I left Intel, came down to Austin and went to business school down here at UT, okay. um, kind of got back to Texas and got my roots here and um yeah and i'm sure you your know, mom was glad to have you back yeah it was fun to get back to texas austin and houston are about three hours apart so it was relatively easy to perfect distance that. right it was like good <laughs> enough that you can go home see the folks but like right. you're not required to exactly you're not popping in for a sudden visit or they're not and so vice versa uh, more, to, more to reverse than that exactly way. Yeah. <laughs> so that's wild and you meant, end up in austin which is a very fun right. vibrant town i hear it like can you have a South by Southwest down there, which yep. I'm sure. Let me guess, you've never been to South by, have you? No, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure you have. If you've been in Austin and you're in marketing, right. why not go to South by? You're yeah. like in your backyard. It's awesome. Yeah. So what? So you went from working for tech companies to working for yourself. We're gonna take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Hey, it's Jason Falls of the Marketing Podcast Network. You know we're trying to bring you the greatest education opportunities out there. We've got another one for you, folks. The Creator Economy Expo, CEX 2023, is for content creators and entrepreneurs interested in building and growing their content-first businesses without relying on social platforms. This year's Creator Economy Expo features 10 amazing keynote speakers and over 30 in-depth breakout sessions. Join 500-plus bloggers, podcasters, authors, newsletter writers, speakers, coaches, and consultants, and 
freelancers at the learning and networking event for content creators. Don't be left out. Plan to attend this year, May 1st through the 3rd, 2023 in Cleveland, Ohio. Register now and get early bird pricing and the Marketing Podcast Network has a special offer for you. You can get $100 off using the coupon code MPN100. That's MPN100. Head over to CEX.events to register. CEX.events, code MPN100. What is the best thing that you've seen so far in the years being an entrepreneur? The best thing, part of it is just, you know, set my own schedule, say yeah. no to clients that I don't want to engage with. But more importantly, just to speak with various entrepreneurs and understand what they're trying to do. And then I always used to say, as a sort of independent consultant, I, I look smarter than I am because all I do is go talk to this client and say, hey, what's working and what's not working? And then go talk to this client and be like, yeah, I got an idea. This is working over here. And this isn't working. And so that's pretty much, and you know, when you work for one company, it's just so hard to get that visibility, but I've had the luxury of working with probably 35 to 40 different startups in the past three or four years, pretty closely. And, um, you know, you understand different business models, different tech stacks, different solutions, different people issues, all of those things. And you just get to, if you're paying attention, you can kind of see, Hey, this is working over here. Let me go try this over here. And doesn't always work, but that kind of experimentation, it's, it's just so much faster. Oh, that's fantastic. Being an entrepreneur, what, what keeps you up at night? Yeah, so what's funny is when I first started, so, you know, I've been a marketing executive for 20 years and I never carried a bag. I never had a sales quote. I never, a little bit of a bonus here or there, but like in marketing, you get maybe what, like 10, 15, 20% tied to your compensation is tied to a bonus. But all of a sudden overnight, I went to 100%. And yeah. so it was just like, all <laughs> of a sudden it's your like, commission. Yeah. Exactly. And so if this well dries up, I'm, it's going to need to go for a while here. So that's a little scary. I mean, there's things you could do to offset that a little yeah. bit. So I've been pretty fortunate that it's been a, it's been a good run so far and I've been enjoying that's it awesome. quite a bit. That's great. So what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? I think part of it is uh, just everybody's out there trying to figure things out, just having a little bit of empathy. I'm definitely a very left brain oriented person. So my gut reaction is to start with systems, engineering, and process. But at the end of the day, you know, people are out trying to figure out how to grow their businesses and having a little bit of empathy for why they're in it and what their situation is, I think it goes a long way. And, and what I find is the fair bit in this executive consulting is a fair bit of the management side, which is more yeah. sort of the uh, template side of it. But then there's the leadership side, which is managing people and overseeing the people. I heard a great quote, I wish I could take credit for it. It's smarts with hearts. You got to have a little bit of both sides of it. And so, you know, I try to do a fair bit of that with my business as well. And I've got to know whether it's entrepreneurs or various executives pretty well. And it's, it's neat to see them be successful and grow. And uh, even when not like to see them move on to the next thing and help them out there. So it's been a lot of fun. I bet. And I know in my business, I've seen a lot of when someone moves from one company to another, have you been following them along? Have they said, Hey, Nick, come over here now. Has that happened a lot in the past 20 years? Yeah. So I've only been doing the consulting for about three and a half, four years, but definitely have seen through my career, there's definitely, and it's funny in Austin where we were just talking about this last week, there's there's one company is successful and you'll see the executive team and the the folks graduate and move on to another company. And then they sweep up a bunch of the similar folks and they run the same plays again. And so I'm sure, you know, that's been a thing in Silicon Valley is starting to see Mm -hmm. become one out here as well. So it's definitely neat. I think part of it is you want to work with people that you know and that that you got relationships with. Yeah, the no like and trust factor. Yeah, exactly. So Nick, where's the best place for people to find you online? Where's your major watering hole? Yeah, I think LinkedIn is probably the the key one. So I try to keep that updated. That's where most of my clients are as well. So it's, yeah, it's been pretty neat. I got to do a better job. I want to get into some videos and various other things up there and start sharing some of the best practices a little bit. Yeah, that's probably the best place. So Nick, this has been so much fun. Thank you for taking yeah. the time out of your busy day because you know, you're busy doing processes and this and that. Probably re- rewiring the microwave in the process too. No, probably <laughs> go, I'm going to go pull some trees out and get oh, cut up. And that's really what we're doing out here in Texas. Oh my gosh. Yeah, seriously. Nick, thank you so much for being on and we'll see everyone next week. Thanks, Seth. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneur's Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast strategy of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys.
Steam Yee. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Christopher Hines hosts a great podcast called Founder Success Methods. Chris, tell us what these fine folks will get out of listening. You'll learn how to really grow your startup and get the basic strategies to build a successful company. We show you all the details and all the strategies that you just can't find on Google, YouTube, or even other podcasts. Ooh, we're going to be lined up for this one. Where can people subscribe? You can search for the podcast, Founder Success Methods, wherever you listen to podcasts, or find me on Twitter at Chris Podcasting. Or go to marketingpodcasts.net. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.